Hey there, another tutorial on Unity UI. I'm going to show you today how to make a main menu interface. Uh, main menu interface is quite simple, really. It's just a, a static screen with some buttons on it. You can do whatever you like to kind of jazz it up a little bit. You can play some animations in the background. You can add some particle effects. You can do pretty much anything you can do in a regular Unity scene because that's all this really is. So I'm going to create a new scene for my new uh, main menu scene. Before I do that, I'm actually going to take one step back. Let's save this out since it's here, main menu. And to give us something to look at, I'm going to just capture a nice kind of establishing shot of my current scene to use as a background. So I'm going to turn my grid off. Shift spacebar to full screen this view. And just kind of get a nice establishing shot here. I'll use the uh, Windows snipping tools. Snip, and then I press enter. Um, I'm sure you've used this before. And it's capture a nice big image. So I'll paste that into Photoshop. Give it a slight blur, and I'll just use this as my background. Probably don't want that manipulator in, so I'll just uh, content to wear that out. And save that somewhere in my assets folder so I can access it. So I'll just close that, uh, close this too, and here's my backdrop. So when you're importing images to be used in the, the Unity UI, it's basically the same as importing images to be used as sprites, um, if you're to do, make a 2D game of sprites. So I just want to select the texture 2D in my project, change it to a sprite, click apply, uh, then I can pop back to my main menu, and I should be able to just drag and drop that backdrop in now that it's a sprite. I'm going to go through the same canvas creation process as we did in the, the first one of these videos. So I'm going to create a new camera, call that UI camera. I don't have a second camera to worry about here, so I'll just get rid of my main camera. Um, so I don't really need to have that. Create a canvas. Um, and I'll make sure I'm using screen space camera, scale of screen size, um, and we should have a pretty predictable output here. Make sure your backdrop is more than big enough. You don't want to accidentally have a, a backdrop that's too small that people are going to see the sides of. So make sure it works in both full screen and widescreen formats, and you should be pretty well covered. Okay, so there's something to, for, for our people to look at. I'll just create a couple buttons. So I'll make a one button. I think order and layer needs to go back if we're going to see one in front of the other. Yep. So I'll just set that to minus 10, just to be sure. Uh, so that I'm sure the button draws on top. These are all centered middle by default, which is what I do want for my menu, so I'm fine leaving it there. I'm just going to center it on screen by changing its position x to zero. Um, and I don't have a whole lot of menu items right now. I don't have any you know, leaderboards or, or high scores or settings or anything right now, so I'm just going to keep it to a, a start game and a quit game button. So this will just be button start. Um, and then I can duplicate this, so control D, duplicate per button quit. Just move that whole button down, not just the label. And then one more text image here. Move that up, make sure it's centered. It's a nice big text size in it. Um, when you resize these past a certain point, they'll disappear. And the reason for that is that the actual box that they're being drawn in is not big enough to contain them. So if I pop in a 2D view here, and I'm using this, um, this special editing tool that's for, for the UI, I can actually resize with, if I start resizing and hold down Alt, um, this is just like resizing in Photoshop. You have to click before you press Alt, but you can resize from the middle as opposed to from the edges, which I find is really nice. Glad they added that in. Uh, I'll center this vertically as well. Set this text color to something that'll kind of pop. There we go. We'll do a nice ugly yellow. <laughs> so 
Set that to bold. Let's call this sample game. Okay. Um, probably the best idea to do a logo if you're doing some kind of a, a polished, nice looking logo as opposed to a, a quick tutorial video logo is to actually import another image that uses transparency. Then you can do all the text formatting you want in Photoshop or Illustrator or whichever image editing program you like to make your logos in. But I'll just use text for today because that's really just, that's not interactive. That's just something that sits there. It doesn't really matter how it's made. Um, so I've got button start and button quit. So all I have to do now is create a quick script that will just load a level or quit the application. So I'll create a new C Sharp script. Let's call this one main menu. Okay, so inside main menu, uh, this is going to be a really easy one. So I'm going to call this void uh, game start. It'll be a public void in order for the UI to access it. And public void grid application. So game start, um, we'll use application load level for this. So application load level is a pretty simple command. You just type in either the, the integer level, so it could be load level one if zero is your main menu, or you can actually use the name of the level. So we've got two overrides for this. So in this case, the name of my level is example scene. So I could type in example scene here, um, but that's going to require me to have to go back and change and edit the code if I change this level name. So instead, I'm going to make a public string, and I'm going to call this uh, game level, and I can default it to being example scene. But this will allow me to change this name later inside the inspector instead of having to drill into code. So that's all we're doing for game start. We're just loading a level, game level. Last video I talked about pausing and the possibility of, you know, if we're going to and from the main menu back and forth and pausing things and if we forget to set time scale back to one, we can come into a problem where you enter a paused game. Just to be sure, um, and this is probably not completely necessary, but I'm just going to make sure that when you click the game start button, time scale is setting itself back to one, just so we're, we're double sure. Uh, quit application is very easy, so I can do application.quit. Um, if you want to get fancy, you could turn on a panel, just like the, the pause panel in the last video, and give a, a yes-no model uh, modal for, for are you sure you want to quit. So we got a game start, we got a quit application, that all looks fine. Jump back here, uh, make sure that the, yeah, this is not, sometimes it'll get into a position, um, I'm using Visual Studio tools, which seem a little bit upset these days. Um, and I've saved the script, but it's not actually refreshing here. See how the preview is not what I was typing. I can just right click main menu and re-import, and that should force it to reload. Uh, unless, of course, Visual Studio is not saving. Okay, no, it was me. My shortcut didn't work. We are fine. Yeah, don't worry about this, uh, this m error message. It's mad that I'm using web player with Visual Studio Tools, so it's giving me a warning about that. Okay, so I'm going to put this script on UI Canvas, so I'll throw uh, the main menu script on there, and just point these buttons to it. So on each button for the on click, I'm going to add the Canvas object, drill into main menu, and this is game start. For button quit, same deal, so plus sign, drag in the Canvas, because that's where our script lives main menu, quit application. Example scene is set up here so I can change that later if I need to. And remember, in order to load new levels, we need to make sure those levels are actually in our build settings. So we can see example scene is in our build settings, but main menu isn't. Um, the order of these levels don't actually matter if you're loading everything by name. The only thing that matters is whatever zero is set to. Zero is what your game is going to play when it first starts. So I can load this in, click start, I'm right in the game, um, and I can't test quit in the editor because it will not let me close the editor. Uh, but once it's built into a standalone on uh, Mac or PC or iOS or Android, it will actually close the application. Um, so that's that. Very, very simple. Um, main menu setup.